Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's Monday Market Webinar on the 23rd of April with me, Michael Hewson, in the absence of David Madden. Uh, thank you for your patience. I'm hoping that all of you can hear me loud and clear. Just having to do a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, uh, disclaimers, risk warnings, what have you. So anything that you hear today should not be construed as investment advice one way or the other. What I'm hoping to do is show you where the key support and resistance levels are with respect to um, various markets. Looking ahead to what I think are the key, um, the key events this week and whether or not the gains that we've seen in European markets over the last few days are likely to continue and certainly I think what we've seen over the past four weeks is a fairly decent rebound in European markets. Um, the big question is whether or not these gains are likely to extend further or whether we could start to find a little bit of short-term resistance. Before I get started however, um, I'd just like to run a couple of questions past you with respect to the format of these webinars. Um, I'd like to garner some feedback to try and improve the quality of the content that we deliver to you guys, because ultimately without you guys I'd be talking to myself. Um, if you do have any questions that uh, you would like to put to me, um, please feel free to um, respond to the chat or alternatively um, drop me an email at this email address here, m.hewson at cmcmarkets.com. What we'd like to know is what you like about the webinars, what you don't like about the webinars. I think that's probably preferable because ultimately I think we gain much more information and feedback on what you don't like rather than what you do. Do you want the webinars to be platform focused? Or do you want them to be more about the markets, technical analysis, educational, that sort of thing? Because I think the more feedback that we get from you guys about um, the format of the webinars, the better that we can tailor them for your overall consumption. But also, I think, in terms of educational content as well. Um, also, if you want to direct questions to me now, just um, respond to the chat request um, which I'm just about to send to you right now so do you have any questions I've just sent a little chat request there um, <coughs> in the meantime um, let's let's get cracking and I think those of you who are regular um, listeners to my periscope updates because I generally try and do periscope updates between um, 7.30 and 9 a.m in the morning if I have time available to do them. Usually I do, but sometimes my calendar dictates that I can't. But uh, in this morning's update I talked about the recovery in European markets. Fourth successive week weekly gain from the lows that we saw in March. It does appear to be running into a little bit of resistance around about the 200 day moving average, but also the 50% retracement of the entire down move that we got here. Now for those of you who haven't seen this, this is the new HTML5 platform, slightly different from the um, the Flex next gen um, platform that I've got in front of me. As you can see, it's probably a little bit more responsive, a little bit more snappy in terms of response time. But also, I think it's a little. I think it's, I think it's a little bit easier to use as well. So look at looking. Looking at the overall direction at the moment, what we've seen with respect to the DAX is for the last three days, despite the fact that we did close higher on Friday, we've traded a little bit sideways below this 12,648, 12,650 area um, for the last three days. We're trading sideways and taking a top level view of this. And as we can see from here, we've got one, two, three, four successive higher candles, a little bit of a sideways consolidation here. But what we're also seeing is I think a slightly firmer tone to the US dollar. 
And one of the key approaches that I like to look at in terms of what markets are doing is I don't just like to look at equity markets, I also like to look at what interest rate markets are doing as well. And interest rate markets have been particularly, in, you know, particularly interesting over the course of the past two or three days. If we look at the US 10-year Treasury, we've seen a significant up move in US 10-year Treasury yields sell off in bond markets over the course of the past few days. And I think that speaks to a slightly more elevated concern about interest rate expectations. If we look at the 10-year Treasury here, we're back above, we're back edging back towards the levels that we last saw in 2014-2013, the 3% level on US 10-year Treasuries. And that's giving a slightly more bid tone to the US dollar. We can see that um, no better illustrated, I think, with respect to how the dollar index is behaving in this particular chart here. And we can see that despite the fact that we've seen a significant rebound in the dollar, what we haven't seen is it break out towards the top side. So we've seen big sell-offs in the cable. We've seen a much, we've seen a significant push higher in dollar yen. What's important though, in the overall context of where the dollar is going is we haven't broken above this series of peaks that we saw at the beginning of March, but also in the middle of January, and also these lows back in September. So we've seen this, we've seen the dollar go big, but what we haven't seen is a significant breakout in the overall um, direction of the dollar. Um, even though the pound has broken below a very significant support level at 139.6570 um, on the back of those comments that we saw at the end of last week by Bank of England Governor Mark Carney. So the overall outlook for currencies, the overall outlook for equity markets is definitely a case of trade what you see. Uh, and for me, I think that's probably more important than anything else, because for me, I think we've seen a rebound in equity markets. The big question that I'm asking at the moment is whether or not we are near the end of this current rebound or whether we can go further. And for me, I think if we're going to see further gains in equity markets, then we need to take out this significant resistance level here. Now I'm looking at the DAX, and you know, I may be making it slightly more complicated than it needs to be, but for me, correlation is very, very important. If we're going to get break, if we're going to get a break higher in the DAX, we also need to see a break higher in the FTSE 100. We also need to see a break higher in the Euro stocks 50. Neither of those three indices over the course of the past three or four days has shown any signs that it's on the cusp of breaking higher. Which suggests to me that ultimately if we're long equity markets right now, we need to think about potentially starting to fade this particular rally um, if we do edge back towards this resistance level around about 12,640 and the 200 day moving average. We're also starting to see fading momentum on the oscillator as well. So the DAX is telling me that we're starting to get a little bit stretched on the upside. We're below a key resistance level. If we also look at the Eurostox 50, my mindset is pretty similar here as well. Similar sort of story. If we break this out, just scrolling out here, we can see a similar pattern unfolding with respect to the Eurostox 50. Let me just make that chart slightly bigger so that you can see it in slightly more detail. Again, we're up against a Fibonacci resistance level, albeit not the 50% one on the DAX, but the 61.8% retracement level on the Eurostox 50, but also the 200 day moving average as well. So both the Eurostox 50 and the EU and the German DAX are pushing against their 200 day moving average and finding a little bit of resistance there as well. If I turn that off, you can see the value is around about 3,509. We're about 15 points away from that. And we are getting a little bit of rollover on the oscillator, but as yet, we haven't broken higher. And I think for equity markets in Europe to break higher, what I would want to see is a break above the Eurostox 50's 200 day moving average, but also a break above the 200 day moving average on the German DAX as well.
So until such times as we get that, we're going to have to be very, very cautious about being aggressively long European equity indices over the course of the next two to three days. And let's not also forget we're coming up to um, the end of the month, um, 30th of April next Monday. So you could see a little bit of month end positioning as well on the back of the four weeks of re rebounds that we've seen over the past few days. If we look at the France 40 or the CAC 40, we can see here that we have, or we do appear to have broken above the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level on the CAC 40, but because we haven't broken above um, that key level on the Eurostox 50 or the German DAX, it does make me a little bit concerned that maybe the move of the CAC 40 is looking a little bit overextended. If I just get rid of that line, get rid of that line there. And move it. There we go. That's gone. Um, we 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 could we could well drift back down on the CAC 40, and we have broken higher on the CAC 40, but we haven't done it on the Eurostox 50 or the Germany 30. And if we also look at the UK 100, it's a similar sort of story. We have seen some outperformance on that, but again, I'm a little bit cautious about being overly long, given that we opened higher, but we've gone aggressively lower and that actually is a little bit worrying the fact that we've gone lower on the FTSE 100 despite the fact the pound is weaker quite considerably weaker normally you tend to get a seesaw effect on the pound against the dollar on the FTSE 100 you get a weaker FTSE you usually see a stronger pound you see a weaker pound you usually get a stronger FTSE at the moment the two are moving in the same direction and that is a little bit of a concern the FTSE is not getting a boost from a weaker pound, which suggests we could get a retest of this 7,320 area um, that acted as resistance on the move higher two to three days ago. So current weakness in the FTSE could well find a drift back towards 7,320 in the short to medium term, simply because we haven't been able to get back above the 200 day moving average. Though momentum is starting to turn more positive, we could well see a drift back down in the short to medium term. So the key events this week are going to be the European Central Bank rate decision in the wake of that PMI data that we saw earlier today. It was much better than expected actually. Um, French and German flash manufacturing and services PMI was slightly more positive in April. That would appear to suggest that the slowdown that we've seen in some of the core economic data out of Europe is probably just a little bit of a blip and we could see a little bit of a pickup. Um, we'll get some further, I think we'll get some further indications as how German businesses perceive um, the business environment in the German IFO, which is due out tomorrow. Um, that should give a better indication than the ZEW, which was very disappointing last week. Um, came in at a five-year low of minus 8.2, which was rather surprising when you consider that we've come up higher for four successive weeks in a row. Looking at Euro dollar, again, this is symptomatic of watching a watching paint dry on a wall. We've traded sideways for pretty much most of this year. The likelihood is we're probably going to retest these 122 area. Um, there's solid, more solid support at 121.65. We can see that here. We've also got a significant um, resistance level around about 125.40. Support 121.65. Is this a topping formation or is this a sideways consolidation? I'm tempted to say it's just a sideways consolidation at the moment. As I say, decent support between 121.60 and 122. Probably going to get a retest of that over the course of the next few trading sessions. It's unlikely that we're going to get a significant breakout of this trading range until we get a significant move higher in US yields. At the moment we're getting a little bit of dollar strength but we're not getting a significant breakout of the dollar um, in respect of the dollar index and until we do the likelihood is we're probably going to continue to range trade this particular pattern at the moment. So keep an eye on the dollar index in the context of this 
so this resistance level here coincides with 121.60-122 on euro dollar. Let's not forget that the US dollar index is around about 57% um, euro. So there's a good correlation between the two. And at the moment, there doesn't appear to be any indication that the dollar is about to break out of its wider range. If we look at the pound against the dollar, we can see from this chart here that we've broken below the April lows, which were round about here earlier this month at 139.75. But again, as with the dollar index, we do appear to have quite a bit of um, leeway to come quite a bit lower. If we can come as low as 137.10, um, which was the lows that we saw earlier this year, which could in essence give us potential a double top here. What we were unable to do last week was break significantly above the 200 week moving average. What is more concerning about this particular weekly candle is it's a key reversal. So that suggests to me that we could be susceptible to further sterling weakness towards this 137.10 level over the course of the past over the course of the next two weeks ahead of next month's Bank of England rate decision. So Mark Carney did throw a little bit of a curveball at us on, on Thursday night, Friday morning. That's really, I think, undermined the short-term narrative of a stronger pound. We could well test towards this 137.10.20 area over the course of the next couple of weeks as a result of that slightly weaker narrative. So certainly in terms of a weaker pound against the dollar, that does appear to be, um, certainly does appear to be a possible outcome towards this 50 day, this 100 day rather moving average now that we've broken below the 50 day, the likelihood is we're probably going to test lower on the basis of this technical weakness in the pound against the dollar chart. What's slightly more concerning is also um, the rebound that we've seen in euro sterling. I've been bearish on euro sterling for quite some time, um, and we do ha we do appear to have rebounded quite strongly higher. But we are pushing against some key resistance levels on this particular chart here. So the chart that I'm the, the resistance level that I'm paying particular attention to on this particular chart is located here. It's, this was wrong chart. Just cancel that. Whoops. Just reset that. Okay, back we go. One day. Cross. Get rid of that. It's around about 88.20 though. If we draw a line through these peaks here, it's around about 88.20 there or 88, which is also where the 50 and the 100 day moving averages come in. So we could see some natural selling interest come in around about 87.90, 88.10 on euro sterling if we do test back up towards that key level there. I think what's more important is also the fact that um, we did we had a very strong positive weekly candle as well last week and, and that could well um, prompt a little bit of a rebound back towards the top end of the recent range that we've seen over the past few days. But overall, I can't see Euro Sterling moving out of the range that we've been in over the course of the past few weeks. It's pretty much normal service being resumed. What is slightly different is Dolly Yen. And Dolly Yen could be um, on the cusp of a significant move higher. 108.20, I talked about it in the chart forums earlier today. Still on course for return to 108.20 and even potentially 109.20, which is the top of the cloud resistance that we've got up here. We've seen some decent gains on dollar yen. Um, we could see a little bit of resistance between 20 and 30, but overall now that we're back within this cloud resistance, we're also um, we're also looking to trend higher. We can draw a trend line through these lows here. Here we go. Nice little trend line through there. So any pullbacks are likely to find decent support through here and we could well potentially retest the top of this cloud resistance here towards 108.5 and 109.50 over the course of the next few trading sessions. So I think 
the likelihood is we're going to get a slightly firmer dollar against the yen, um, seeming, seeing as how closely correlated they are with respect to US Treasury yields. Tends to be a fairly positive correlation there. So as long as we're above 2.9% on US Treasury yields, then we could well see a firmer dollar yen. If these yields start to slip back, then dollar yen is also likely to slip back as well. So that's dollar yen. Also keeping an eye on oil prices and oil prices and US interest rate yields are likely to be closely correlated as well. Now on some of my recent Periscope updates in the morning I've been talking about crude oil prices and we've now broken above 71.65. We've continued to hold above that key level and while we do so I think there's a decent chance, despite what President Trump was tweeting last night about OPEC and the fact that his allegation, whatever you think of it, that uh, OPEC is artificially propping up prices, for me this is about trading what you see. And at the moment, while we're above the 71.65 area on US crude prices, then the line of least resistance for crude prices is for a move higher. What's also more important in terms of the technical picture on Brent crude, and this is just as true as it is for WTI, the technical picture is also supportive of a move higher. So you could argue, well, crude oil prices generally tend to move higher on the back of a weaker dollar. At the moment, the dollar is strong, and yet crude oil prices are continuing to edge higher. That may well be true, but at the moment, now that we've broken above this resistance level, this Fibonacci level, which I've drawn in from the 2014 highs to the lows that we saw in 2016, if I blow this chart up, we can see that we've consolidated a move above this 50% retracement level at 71.65. But more importantly, we've also broken above the peaks that we saw at the beginning of this year. So on a technical basis, that should be supportive of further gains for the oil price. I would only revise that outlook if we drop below this 71.65 area. Now we had another go at it in the middle of last week, but we weren't able to sustain the move lower. We closed back above it. Until such times as oil prices, Brent oil prices, close below this 71.65 area on Brent, then the likelihood is we're probably going to have a another look at $80 a barrel. Whatever the outcome of that would be in terms of limiting the upside in equity markets, prompting concerns about inflation, the next key resistance level on Brent is 61.8 it's at $82 a barrel. If we go back to how the market behaved in 2014 and this $82 a barrel level here, in the space of four weeks, we went from $82 to $70 in very short order. There's not really anything in terms of resistance levels between here and here. So until such times as we break back below 71.65, 7165, 7150, the line of least resistance for Brent at the moment is from move towards that $80 a barrel and $82 a barrel the next resistance level. Let's look confirmation for that on in terms of the WTI because the two do closely correlate. And whatever you think about US shale production and the fact that um, um, shale producers are likely to just increase production in response to that, these two can move independently of each other. We've seen the spread between the two move apart. We have broken above, in the case of WTI, above the, the highs that we saw earlier this year at $66 and 78, 77, there or thereabouts. We've seen the market break above that. We are running into a little bit of a resistance around about the sorts of levels up here. But if we look at the way the market's shaping up, it doesn't really look that toppy. Yeah, we could we could we could well drift back all the way back here. 
But at the moment, as in Brent, WTI, the momentum, continues to edge ever so slightly higher. Yes, indeed, the breakout hasn't been any way, hasn't been in any way as substantial as it has in Brent. But nonetheless, we are managing to hold fairly comfortably above this 50% retracement level that we've seen drawn in here. So while the breakout hasn't been in any way substantively positive for WTI, it's still nonetheless holding above the previous peaks from earlier this year. And that, on a technical basis, is fairly positive. So certainly keep an eye out on Brent and WTI. It looks to me as if the momentum is still positive for a move higher towards 72, um, 72.50 and potentially even higher. I think if we do break above $70 a barrel on WTI, we could see a few stops get triggered on the basis of the fact that it's a round number. So paying particular attention to WTI, but also paying particular attention to Brent crude as well. Let's move on to dollar CAD and Aussie dollar, because last week we saw the Bank of Canada keep interest rates unchanged. And that has prompted a little bit of a rebound in dollar CAD, a bit of Canada weakness. It was never probable, it was never really likely that the Bank of Canada was going to raise rates uh, last week and shadow the Fed. It is finding a little bit tricky to get back above the 50 day moving average, but also this little resistance level that we've got here. If I draw in a resistance level through there, we can see that at 128.20 there is a decent area of resistance. If I can just tweak that to extend it to the right, we can see that round about 128.20 is a decent area of support for dollar CAD. So decent area of resistance, my mistake, decent area of resistance in the dollar CAD, which in the short term could cut the, uh, the current upward momentum. Also you could find that further gains in the oil price could limit some of the Canada weakness that we've seen over the past few days. Um, certainly keeping an eye on that particular level there but also if we look at, I just need to redraw that, just click on it, delete it. Redraw that from that there. So we've broken higher through there. We could run into resistance here. This was also a head and shoulders reversal. We did meet our minimum price objective, so that, that pattern there is pretty much completed, having broken lower. And now the next key resistance on dollar CAD is 128.20. So keeping an eye on that for further potential gains going forward. Last but not least, let's look at the Australian dollar. Looking at that 15 minute chart, let's look at it on a slightly longer term basis. Pushing up against a very key support area on Aussie dollar. So this is a big level for the Aussie here. We've seen a little bit of a significant sell off in the past few days. If we draw this trend line in from the lows in 2016, sitting on a big, big support level on Aussie dollar also the lows that we saw earlier this year. If we break below this support level here then we could well see further losses on Aussie dollar and a move down towards around about 75 and a half. So um, round about 75 if you just click on that button there and see the lows there. It's round about 76.33 so I'll be looking for a break of 76.20 to push down towards around about 75 and a half. If we hold above 76.20 then we could get a decent rebound back to around about 76.80. So keep an eye on that key support there. Any other questions ladies and gents please feel free to send them over otherwise I'll wrap this up. Any questions? Looking for 
them now. Yes, no. Or otherwise. <coughs> okay, well, that's it for this week. As I say, just a quick, um, just a quick feedback. What do you like about the webinars? What don't you like about the webinars? And do you want them to be more platform focused or markets focused? Because at the end of the day, it's all about you feeding the information back to us and us tailoring them to your uh, individual requirements. Otherwise, I'd like to thank you all for um, your attendance today, and. Um, have a good week trading. As I say, if you have any questions, please send them over to me at m.hewsoncmcmarkets.com or tweet me at mhewson underscore cmc. I'm on Twitter to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks very much and uh, have a good week trading.